Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be why they don't care about you. I've got three emails I'm going to go through with you today. Two of them are from guys, and one of them is from a woman. And I got a quote I want to share with you before we get into the first email. And a quote says, People often will put up with all kinds of rude, disrespectful, manipulative, and unloving behavior out of their desire to be loved by the person they love. Men and women both tend to project their high attraction level and romantic fantasies onto the person they desire. Out of their desire to be loved, they will often ignore the fact they are being taken advantage of, used, and their affection and love are not reciprocated. They delude and lie to themselves hoping things will one day change and their imperfect lover will magically become their ideal lover. The reality is no one will ever do or say anything to you that you don't invite them to do. When you put up with bad behavior and mistreatment, you are communicating that this is acceptable. When you stand up for yourself and are permanently willing to walk away from people who mistreat you, Only then can you create the space for someone who is ideally suited for you and who will treat you the way you want and deserve to be treated. You have to participate in your own rescue. I had a a guy that I was working with earlier today. He's in the process of getting a divorce and the woman he was married to is like she doesn't want to be involved in raising their kids. She can't hold down a job. When they were together, she didn't want to work. And now that she's on her own, it's like she can't even take care of herself. And this particular client is also working in a career that on a scale of 1 to 10 was like a 3. And when we went through and listed and what took him through the process of figuring out what his driving force needs are, none of his driving force needs were fulfilled in his present job, which is obviously why he's so unfulfilled at it. But part of his problem, the, where he's at right now in life, is that he's still blaming other people. He's pissed off at his ex-wife-to-be. He's in essence blaming her for all of the problems in their relationship and the fact he's just mad. He's pissed off at her. And he's also, it's same thing with his career. He wants to point the finger and blame everybody else for the fact that he's the one that made the choices that got him to where he's at right now. And until he gets to a place where he's willing to accept himself that where he's at in his life is a direct result of the choices he's made. He's really powerless to help himself because he's not willing to take any responsibility. That's what a lot of human beings tend to do. We tend to point the finger, oh, it's that person's fault. It's not my fault. It's that person's fault. Oh, it's my coach's fault. Oh, it's my employer's fault for having such a shitty place to work. Well, if you don't like where you're working, go work somewhere else. But people, part of their pattern, their story that they tell themselves is they blame other people. They feel bad. They're unhappy that things are the way they are in their lives. And deep down, they know it's really themselves and the fact that they're not really willing to take any action to help themselves. And yet, oh, it's that person over there. It's society. It's it's the president. It's the governor of my state. It's my representatives. At the end of the day, you must participate in your own rescue. If your life sucks right now, If your life is not the way you want it to be, the only person that can fix it is you. And the only way it can get fixed is by you taking action. That means knowing what you want and moving in the direction to take some action to figure out and to do some research and take some action so you can discover which way you want to go. This this same particular client, he's potentially considering starting his own business. But I also said, well, starting a business is going to take several years to get it off the ground and since he had the job that he's presently working in is only a three on a scale of one to ten as far as it being emotionally compelling. What I encouraged him to do was to go look at CareerBuilder, Monster.com or just do some general Googling to find some potential careers or jobs that are out there that match those six driving force needs that he had written down. But I could tell just the state of mind he was in, he really doesn't want to do that because right now he's still addicted to his story. He's like, oh, well, I've looked for jobs in the past. I was like, how much research have you done based upon what we just discussed? Well, none. I was like, you've already given up and you haven't even, we haven't even finished the phone session. You've already given up. You're not, it's like he's not even willing to help himself. It's like you've 
got to participate in your own rescue. You have to be willing to take some action to change your life. And if you're not willing to take some action, you can read all the books and you can watch all the videos and you can talk to all the best coaches in the world. But the bottom line is if you don't do anything to help yourself, nothing's going to change. It's like one of the things that Wayne Dyer says I really love. He said in a, a, a video of his, I think probably 10 years ago I saw this. It's so true. He says no matter where you are in life right now, your best thinking got you to where you are. Think about that. It's very easy to point the finger and say, oh, it's somebody else's fault. It's that person's fault over there. It's not mine. It's not my fault that I got rejected. It's not my fault that my wife left me. It's not my fault that my wife cheated on me. It's not my fault that I lost my job. It's not my fault that I work in a job that I hate. But if you've got a story that's full of limiting beliefs of why you don't deserve to have what you want in your life, why you don't deserve to have the things you want or achieve the things you want, we'll go, human beings will then go and work at a job or a career or get involved in relationships because they think, oh, I gotta be realistic. In other words, they've already made the choice that being happy, doing something I love, having somebody lo- love me who's a functioning teammate, not somebody who can't hold down a job or doesn't take care of themselves or is getting all kinds of plastic surgery because they don't want to go to the gym and take care of their body properly. Think about that. It's like we all do it to a degree. It doesn't matter whether it's working out or eating right or our job or our friendships or our relationships or our business partners. At the end of the day, we are the captain of our own ship. In life, you're either a passenger or you're a pilot. It is totally your choice. And these three emails that I'm going to go through with you, that's something – it's very similar. That's what you're going to see in these emails is one of the things I learned from Tony Robbins many years ago and it's very powerful. He says, we have to see things as they are, not better than they are and not worse than they are but as they really are. Because otherwise, if we don't see things as, as they are, then we're deluding ourselves as to our reality. And in some of these people, they're seeing things as better than they really are instead of looking at the actions of the other person that they're involved with. And because they're not seeing the situation for the way that it really is, it's causing them pain and heartache. Because obviously, they're emotionally invested in these situations. So let's get in the first guy's email. He says, hey, Coach Wayne. I can't say that I've bought your book yet. Well, for those of you who are watching this and you haven't either downloaded the Kindle version or purchased a paperback edition, you got to learn the fundamentals of what I teach because you're just not going to be able to be successful and reach your full potential if you don't at least learn the fundamentals of the things that I'm talking about in all these videos and articles that I post on my website. So go to my website right now underneath the email sign up box. There is an image of my book. If you click on that, it will take you right to Amazon and underneath it, you can either select the Kindle edition or the paperback edition and order whichever one works best for you. He says, you're the only person on the net that actually makes sense in the YouTube universe. Anyway, I began dating a woman at my previous job. It began for me as just another woman to put on the notch. Another notch in your bedpost. He says, we ended up having a superb connection, one that I never felt before emotionally and sexually as the sex was an everyday occurrence. She had previously been engaged to a person who had a substance abuse problem. Well, right there, what does that tell me about her? She stays, she fell in love with this guy's potential and the fact, and ignored the fact that the dude had a drug problem. And she stayed with him and she continued to get engaged. And he obviously had this problem probably before she even started dating him. But it's like we project our fantasies onto the other person and we assume they feel the same way. It's like we continue working at a job that we hate and yet we go home miserable every night and we go, oh, that's not the job. That's not the problem because we've got to be realistic. We've got to pay the bills. There's absolutely no way we can work and do something we really love for a living. It's somebody else's fault. It can't be mine. That shit in the floor, I, hey, that ain't my kids. <laughs> my dog didn't just shit in the floor. That just, I don't know how it got there. She thought she, it's just like, you know, everybody that's in prison, it's like, they're all innocent. 
He says she thought she had to take care of him whenever something had gone wrong with him. So in other words, she's trying to fix him. She's not looking – didn't look at her former lover for what he was. She was trying to make him in the to the perfect ideal lover. In other words, she said, hey, he's a fixer-upper. He's got a lot of potential. You can't fall in love with somebody's potential. All you're going to do is get hurt if you do that. He says, I told her I didn't want to be with someone on a two-track mindset. She begged and pleaded for me not to leave her and I agreed and she supposedly got rid of him. Months went by. We had great outings, travels and great sex. About three months in, I asked her if we were exclusive. You definitely haven't read my book yet. And she said, definitely. You're acting like a woman at this point. A man who understands women and gets where he is at all times in a relationship never would ask a question like that. Can you picture James Bond asking, are we exclusive? Are we boyfriend, girlfriend? Are we serious now? Of course not. He says, I then began to become emotionally attached and told her I had strong emotions for her, hinting at love. Another two weeks went by and we talked at my place and she said she wasn't emotionally ready for a relationship and asked if we could take off the boyfriend girlfriend title. So in other words, what really happened is you started acting like a woman. You started acting like a woman who was unsure of herself and that turned her off because it dissipated the sexual polarity. You no longer were that sure confident guy who she started hooking up with. You got a little taste of the pussy and then you just totally fucking came unglued. He says, I calmly and basically told her yes and to get herself together. Even though we worked together, I gave her the cold shoulder only talking about business. After a week, she contacted me to have dinner. We did. We didn't have sex, but we just talked. So it sounds like you hung out and were her therapist or her gay male girlfriend instead of her sexy, confident lover. The next week, she asked me to dinner. We'd had dinner, had sex, and everything was going great to my knowledge. The following week, I asked her if she wanted to have dinner at my place and she said yes. A few days later, I asked her what time she was coming over and she says she forgot about her friend coming to town and she started acting standoffish and afraid. And at the end of the day, she said it was basically over between us and we talked rationally about it at the park that night. He says where her friend was. Where was her friend? Yeah, like, yeah it was bullshit. It's what happened. You started acting like a woman instead of this confident guy who was sure of yourself. Instead, you tried to make her the man in the relationship and that only confused her and made her feel uncomfortable and so she broke it off with you. He says, I did not get angry at her but I tried to pry for closure for a reason why and I never got it. Well, it's pretty obvious. You acted like a woman. That's why you got rejected. You presented yourself as this confident guy who was just hooking up with her. You were indifferent. You were just kind of hanging out, having fun and hooking up in the beginning. And then you thought, oh, I'm in love with this girl. I got to make her my girlfriend and we got to get all serious because you've seen too many movies. And you started acting the way like you saw in all the movies and TV shows that you watch and you got rejected. He says, I was laid off from the job in which I worked with her. I've turned myself around, losing 70 pounds. I'm looking good now. Good job, dude. That's awesome. I met a new girl and that's going well. Not great like the ex. I got a new job, better pay, more time off. Awesome, dude. He says, but the girl who broke up with me is still in the back of my mind because I had such an emotional and sexual connection with her. Well, part of the problem is you just haven't found anybody better than what you had. And it's like human beings, we all tend to want what we can't have and since she was the one that ditched you, you feel like, oh, I got to have this girl back. It's, whoever gets dumped, it's always a lot worse for the dumpy than the dump or. He says, I haven't heard from her in a month and a half and I have too much self pride to contact her. Good for you, dude. Look at all the great changes you made in your life. That's fucking awesome. You got a better job even though you lost the job that you had. You got a, a new girl in your life. You've lost 70 pounds. It's like that's fucking awesome, dude. Pat yourself in the back for that. He says, I was wondering the age-old question. Will she be back or should I let it go? Assume and act as if you're never going to hear from her again. You know what? It's her loss. But you need to read my book so you can learn the fundamentals because even if she, if she does come back, 
you're going to be unprepared and then you'll just go right back to your old bad behavior and screw things up. So do yourself a favor. Learn the fundamentals because things will go better with the woman that you're dating now and you'll – by applying that, you'll be able to attract a much better quality woman in the future because it sounds like the girl you're dating, as fun as it is, as fun as she is, she's not what you really want. It's not on the same level as the previous girl. I want you to have somebody that knocks your fucking socks off, not somebody that's just like, eh. I'm a peak performance coach. It's all about reaching your full potential, not settling, not being average, not being mediocre. That's what most people in this world do. But the average person is just simply not willing to take any action to help themselves. It's like the Buddha said, faith without action is meaningless. You could sit in your house and meditate and zen out all day long. It's like one of my friends once talked told me there's an old saying if you zen out all the time they'll come and take your furniture think about it what does that mean it means not taking action not taking responsibility for your life not taking care of the things that you know you need to take eventually guess what happens you get kicked out of your house and they come and take your furniture especially if you got a mortgage and you stop paying so let's get into the second email a guy says hey coach Corey, i appreciate your assistance I've been dating this girl for about seven months and two to three weeks ago, she hung up on me. I merely gave her some advice regarding her living conditions and issues regarding her sister and ex-husbands. This is a huge mistake that a lot of guys make. They start giving out advice. She's she's talking about things and then you try to solve her problems. Worst thing you can do. So when you feel compelled, if you're a guy and and your girl starts talking about her exes or her sister or one of her girlfriends and all the problems that she's having at work. Before you start giving her advice and telling her what to do or what she should tell her friends to do, you got to ask this one simple question. Honey, do you want me just to listen or do you want my advice? And 99.9% of the time she goes, no, no, I just want you to listen. You go, okay, what else? Tell me more. Really? Oh my God. Really? What else? Huh? No way. That happened? Oh my God. That's pretty much all you have to do. And when she gets done talking, tell me more. Don't leave anything else. Don't leave anything out. What else? When she's done, she'll go, oh, I'm so glad we talked. I feel so much better. I love you. Thank you. And you'll be on. I didn't really do anything. Women resolve their problems by talking about them. First and foremost, however, it doesn't excuse the fact that she fucking hung up on you, which was rude and immature. He says, then I got a blistering email where she told me I had no right to tell her what to do in various areas of her life. And that we only date. She was hostile, condescending, and patronizing. This was out of left field for me and totally unexpected. I sent her a short text a week later. Then she replied with more of the same hostile vitriol. She also blocked me on Facebook and hid her relationship status. What should I do? Should I reach out or wait or move on? Fuck that noise. She is immature. I wouldn't call her. I wouldn't text her. I wouldn't give this woman the time of day. And if she does reach out and say, I would love to see you. However, the way you treated me by hanging up on me, sending me a hateful email, blocking me on social media, that's really immature. If you got a problem with me or you're upset at me, let's talk about it like adults. And if that's out of the question, then it's probably better that you and I don't see each other anymore. You got to let a woman know that the way she treated you is unacceptable. But see, the thing is, this woman is rude and disrespectful and a shitty communicator. And you're going, well, that's okay. Yeah, sure. Let's go back out again. This would be great. Should I continue chasing her? Think about that, dude. No one will ever do or say anything that you don't invite them to do. So you continue to pursue her, which you've already done that. And what did she do? She gave you a nasty email. Rude, condescending, disrespectful. You're basically saying, hey, please, thank you. May I have another? Please treat me that way again. It was so much fun the last time around. A man who loves himself and respects himself is going to say, you fucking hung up on me? Wow, don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out, honey. But if she reaches out, I wouldn't ever call or text her again. But if she does reach out, you got to say, look, last time we talked, you were rude. You were disrespectful. You sent me a hateful email and you blocked me on social media. Uh, quite frankly, that's really immature. If you got something that you're upset about, let's talk about it. But if that's too much to ask, then it's probably best that we don't see each other anymore and we don't talk anymore. So it's up to you. What, how would you like to proceed? And she's like, fuck you, motherfucker. Ah! 
then you know, have a nice life. I would never, res- I would never answer her after that. If she just totally comes unglued, it's like she could take a flying fucking roll in a donut. So let's move on to the third and final email. This one's from a woman. She says, "Hey, coach, my boyfriend disrespected me and our relationship. He moved his ex-girlfriend into his home because she claimed that she needed his help to get." back to her country. She claimed she had a five-month-old baby from him that she couldn't find him to tell him about. So she just showed up and says, oh, by the way, this is your kid. Oh, that's nice. Paternity test. He said she told him if he helps her out, she will pay him six figures for helping her out. I got a bridge that I can sell you. It's really cheap. My question is, should I still be by his side through this to help see him through this? Or should I have broken up with him? I asked him to tell her about me and he said no because she will not want to give him anything if she knows he is in a relationship. What should I do in this particular situation? Well, my question is to you is, do you like the fact that your boyfriend has now moved his ex-girlfriend in with him and supposedly he has a kid with her and he's doing all this for money and he won't tell her about you? What do you think about all that? Are you happy with that? I personally wouldn't be. I think that's pretty fucking rude and disrespectful. And how I would personally handle this situation if it were me, I'd say, you know what? I think it's rude. I think it's disrespectful. If you're doing all this for the money, then you know what? We should see other people and – you can enjoy your time with your ex-girlfriend and once she moves out and she's out of your life, then give me a call and if I'm still single, maybe we can talk about seeing each other again. But right now, this situation doesn't work for me and I don't like how you're treating me. I don't like the fact that you're deceiving your ex-girlfriend here about the fact that you are in a relationship with me. So I'm out of here. You got to be willing to walk away from these kinds of situations because – when you put up a shit like this, this is the kind of thing that a lot of women do when they get involved with married guys or even men that get involved with married women. They keep waiting around, waiting around, waiting around. The guy's like, oh yeah, I just wait for the right moment to tell her that I'm leaving her. And all the, all the guy's really doing is blowing a bunch of sunshine up your ass to keep you on the hook so he can keep you going and keep the other one going at the same time. And it's just you deserve better. You deserve to have somebody who doesn't have all this kind of bullshit going on. But as long as you stay involved with somebody like this, you're not being you can't create a space for somebody to come into your life and fill who doesn't have all this bullshit going on. If I were you, I would fucking run from this dude like the fucking plague and say, "Hey, thanks for the memories. It's been great. I hope it works out with you and your ex and you live, guys live happily ever after. But this shit doesn't work for me. It's rude and disrespectful and I'm just not interested in it. I want to date other people. I want to move on with my life and we shouldn't see each other anymore. I'm not interested in being involved with you as long as this crap's going on. That's just – that's you push me too far. Thanks but no thanks. That's what I would do if I were you. But then again, it's your life. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for choosing whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon.